recording. <laughs> All right, so adding our little dabs, following the form of the fish sort of at random with our masking fluid and then filling out some of the scales and just adding a little bit of variation with that. And while that dries, so to mix some of these colors with this palette, and then I do have like another palette here just to show you like the differences. Um, this one, I can get similar results. They're not exactly the same, but it's exactly the same logic. Um, so I have a sepia brown instead of my burnt umber. Um, it's a little bit less, I would say like yellow, red maybe, than the burnt umber slightly. There's more yellow I find in the burnt umber. Um, and then for my blues, I have uh, Prussian blue again, ultramarine again, they're pretty standard. I don't have a cerulean on here. I love to keep a cerulean on it. And then I have here like a lemon yellow and a cadmium yellow. That's a little bit less, uh, I think it's the light. Yeah, it's the light one. So it's a bit more yellow and less orange than the one I have. And then this is like, instead of my Alizarian crimson on this one, I have the permanent red and then I have my cadmium red. So usually within a palette that's designed to go in a small kit like this, you're gonna have some sort of variation of those colors. And the logic that I'm gonna show you for this is the exact same. Um, you're gonna get slightly different results, but it should sort of function in the same way in terms of like chemistry or whatever. So to get my purples, I'm just gonna move this off for a second. Well, let's start with the head. So the main color of the head is my cadmium red. So I'm just gonna like take a little bit and do a wash of cad red, just so you can see. Um, and then, and I actually like, I was going pretty rough on these because they're organic creatures. Um, so I actually like kind of wet the page, but then like stippled back in just to give that variation. And so this is what it would look like with just the cad red if I were to leave it to white, which is what I did on this fish actually. However, I'm just gonna do a little quick wash of the yellow. You want it to be fairly light. I'm just gonna let that dry. And then for my shadow color, I actually took my alizarian crimson and you can even mix it with a little bit of the cad red because the alizarian crimson or your permanent red or whatever you have that's a more blue magenta color it's already a cooler color so it works really well for going into your shadows so that's sort of how i ended up layering these colors for this particular fish to get some of those effects so i go from like my higher chroma red into a more blue red and then over the yellow just so you can see this i think you'll see it it's pretty pretty light but instead of it going over white if i go over the yellow now it's still a little bit wet but that's okay and let it sort of show through you're actually going to get something that's um much more higher chroma and brighter so I actually do kind of prefer this uh, when I did it on my other fish. And then for the shadow, it's the same logic. I just went in with my alizarian crimson. And then you can also go a little bit thicker and darker on your cad red, just to sort of give yourself the shadows for where that rounds around the fish's head. So we can start with the red, I think, just because it's like the easiest part to start with. So I'm just going to switch over to my fish. Um, and for this, I just like kind of thought of interesting patterns. So we can kind of come down on the head into here and then maybe like come down a little bit, almost like patches because koi fish always have patches on them. So I'm actually just going to take some of my cad yellow and water it down. I'm not going to bother like wetting the paper first for this. I don't really think it's necessary, but I'm just going to lay like a really sort of loose fine wash of my cad yellow. And I'm gonna sort of overlap into the first part of these black marks here. 
And then I'm gonna leave this sort of to the top of the fish and less underneath because it will go into shadow. So we can sort of drop the yellow out where it curves underneath. And maybe up here too, where it's hitting into the highlights. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that yellow. And if we want like maybe another red patch down here. Um, but here I'm gonna be a little bit more careful and I'm just gonna miss the overlapping part of those. Um, those scales there, just so we keep a little bit of that white. And we can go and add just a little bit into maybe the tail area, but not too much, just a little bit like. Just like that. So just a tiny little bit, just to give that warmth underneath the oranges. This is what I don't like about this Canson paper is that the minute you drop any water on it and touch it, it just comes right off. <laughs> That's okay, we just learn to work with it or don't touch it, <laughs> just let it dry. All right, so now for the red part, this is probably fairly dry, but it doesn't matter. It's just gonna sort of blend anyways. I'm gonna go straight in with my CAD red. And I'm gonna let it be fairly watery to start off because I kind of want to have it sort of go from a lighter orange to a darker orange. And again, I'm just kind of like stippling it in. I'm not being really um, precious about where it goes. I wanted these fish to be fairly textured. It's almost like you're doing like a messy drawing over it but it adds a lot of really interesting shapes and volume over the fish. And then I'm gonna go in over those black areas for here. I kind of looked at a lot of koi fish before sort of designing how I was gonna do these. And the one thing I really liked about them was this sort of patchwork of variation of color in their in their body and in their scales that was a little bit much but you can go thicker onto so if you have like a really thin wash you can start with that and then just load your paintbrush with more almost not dry paint but closer to dry and then just stipple that back in around the edges this is totally not the normal washing technique that we normally use And then I'm just gonna darken in through here on the side again. And I've already protected the white on some of those scales. So I'm not worried about going over them. Oh, there's Anne. All right. And then I'm just gonna do the same back over here on the body with my cad red. I'm basically moving along the fish to give this a chance to dry a little bit as I go. So I want this to be like sort of nice and hot red here. And then there's parts where I don't want it to, um, I wanna keep it white between the little scales. So I'm just gonna not paint those areas. So instead of, um, instead of masking everything, I'm just gonna be careful to, while I'm sort of stippling the color in there to just kind of leave those areas. I've masked a few of them, but I kind of like the random sort of quality when you don't mask everything. It just gives it a little bit more of an organic look because it's not all perfect. And then to sort of break out of that pattern, I just sort of put a little bit less and less. Like you would when you're stippling a drawing, it gets lighter and lighter as you put the dots farther apart. And then down here, I wanted some, so I'm just gonna add some of those in there.
And then on the tail, same thing. I just took my CAD red. Um, this you can kind of use. So, you know, like normally we do washes with the watercolor, um, but I've also been in the top part of this doing like a stippling effect like this and sort of letting the dots touch each other closely to give that sort of drawing effect. And then what you can also do on the tail is sort of use, well, that wasn't enough water. That's dry brushing. But you can sort of use a little bit more water on the brush, but almost stipple, but using more of the body of the brush to get some of these sort of effects where you have some motion going through the, the wash, um, but it's not as tightly stippled as this. I usually need to turn my page a little bit for this. So again, I'm just gonna take some water in my CAD red. And I think I'll just start up here and just kind of loosely go where I think that spot might be on that fish's tail. I would normally take a little bit more time around these, uh, these water pieces. So take your time at home to do this properly. I'm, it's gonna be a little bit messy on my end. Cause I've only got an hour. This is a rush painting, speed painting. And then from here again, I'm just where it sort of goes like orange around into this tail here. I'm just sort of stippling that in at random and leaving some of the whites visible and then darkening some areas down in here. Just to give that sort of rich textured look of not everything being perfect. And then from there, now that this is all a little bit dry, I'm gonna go in and I might actually mix my alizarin crimson because I find it's a little bit too blue by itself. I'm just gonna mix a little bit in with it, in with the CAD red, just to cool it and darken it a little bit. And then again, not too much water on this one. I'm just gonna kind of go in and stipple into the edge sort of where the, where it's kind of rounding on the form. And if you get too much or if it's too dark, just lightly dab it with your paper and it'll sort of also add to that random, that random mark making look. And then down on the side of the fish is where I'm actually gonna add a little bit more of this color because this is where it's sort of falling into shadow. And then again, just like on the top. So I'm just following the same logic now down the fish. keeping the hotter, warmer areas to the top now, because that's where the light will hit. And then allowing that cooler red to go more to the sides. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more of my cat red up here because I find this a little bit patchy. So I'm gonna just sort of smooth it out with some of that cadmium red. Just between the areas that I find a little bit too, uh, too harsh. 
This is almost like dry brushing right now. And this way we can get some really, really rich, intense color, which I find goes really nice against that black ink. Oh, and I forgot this little part down here. I'm just gonna add some of that warmer blue red falling off toward the edges here. All right. So after I've got my orange pattern established and I know where it's going to be, I know where everything else needs to turn or be painted, painted white, <laughs> we'll say. Um, so to mix those colors, basically to mix my purples, obviously, I've got a lot of choice on my palette right now because I've got very three very different blues. Um, and then I've got two very different reds. And I also put um, a burnt umber on my palette for this because this is how I create sort of muted tones. So obviously like the first thing that you do if you wanna create a purple is take your main blue, which for me is my ultramarine. And I'm actually gonna take my Alizarian Crimson because I know it's gonna make a nice purple because it's already toward the red. So this is going to be a more it needs to be more on the blue side for purple because it's in the water. I don't want it to be too far to the red. So I just balance my purple by adding quite a bit more blue in there. And then I get something like this, but this is way too saturated for this fish. It won't look like a white fish in shadow. It's gonna look more like a purple fish. So that's when I take my, a tiny little bit of my burnt umber very small amount. And there, because there's a bit of yellow in the burnt umber, I find this works actually really well with purples. Um, and by doing that, it just kind of knocks back. So now I've already got a much more muted tone. And then I could even add a little bit more blue in there and blue and ultramarine or ultramarine blue and burnt umber will actually make a neutral gray. So this is where I can get those variations of gray purple so a mix of ultramarine blue alizarian crimson and then your burnt umber will give you really really nice muted purple tones so we can start with those i mean you can also play with the other colors too like if i were to just take my ultramarine blue with my cadmium red these are almost complementary so i will get also a muted sort of gray although just a sec you have to get the balance right and then you push it from there. So I've got something that's a little bit more red here. And then I've got something that's a little bit more blue just by adding a little bit of blue. So this is another way to reach um, some muted sort of purple colors. Uh, or we can take this more green blue. I'm just showing you what's available basically on this palette. Um, and then so you can find your sort of magic combinations with whatever colors you have. So I find that this combination gives me a really nice sort of deep purple. And again, you can knock that back with a little bit of burnt umber. Um, and then just play with the amount of red or blue in it to give you oops, to give you different variations so you can go warmer or cooler with that i find that alizarian crimson and cerulean blue create a really nice purple there's just something that i really love about this color and then you almost in the sake of this painting, you almost don't even need to do anything with it because we have so much 
cerulean blue or i do in my in my water that i can almost get away with that as a mix so those are basically like you can create sort of a bunch of options on your palette and that way when you're actually painting your fish you're not left with just one solid color that's like an out of the tube color or even just a one mix you can get a lot more variation within the body just by like going through with a few of your colors and creating a few different variations so i'm just gonna let me see i'm gonna start with my ultramarine blue for now and you can also branch off these colors so i'm actually gonna mix quite a bit of this and I know that I can get sort of a muted purple by adding my cadmium. And then I'm just gonna like lay this down in, let me see, sort of in here. You wanna go kind of light with this. So I actually have quite a bit of water. And maybe I'll put this one cause it's a little bit more red. I can put this one in towards the sort of blending point near my other red colors. And I'm leaving the white between my scales. So I'm just, I already have them drawn in. So I'm just not painting those little areas. And I'll just sort of like we were doing with the orange, I just sort of lay this in in patches. I don't want the whole fish to be this color. And then I might actually allow, I've got some blue creeping in there. I might actually just let it happen and then just go next to it. So it's a similar purple because it's from sort of the same mix, but I've allowed a little bit more of that ultramarine blue to mix in with that particular mix that I just made. And so it adds just a nice little slight variation of color in the same family. And I'm sort of keeping this to the top of the fish right now. Um, in some of the areas that kind of curve around, I become a little bit less tight about it just because I actually want it, the detail to kind of blend off to the side so it doesn't have the same amount of texture over the whole surface. I really want to draw the attention to this area. So I don't, I don't need the same level of detail through here that I have through here. For the head, I might take this little mix that we have that's already ultramarine blue in that, um, in the cadmium red purple color. And I might just add a little bit of my cerulean blue to it to make sort of a more like, see, I'll just show you on here. It makes kind of like a soft blue gray. And I'm gonna use that up around the face area just to sort of hint at some of these shadows. So I'm actually just gonna sort of stipple this in. Um, the light is gonna be sort of casting around his head because he, there, are three there are three dimensional volumes. So I wanna kind of bring out these these forms a little bit with some of these colors. And I'm gonna let it work a little bit into, we can start glazing over or like layering over into some of these, some of these uh, scales on the side. And it will just add to that three-dimensional form and sort of tie everything together. And on the side too. 
just sort of along the edge of his head here. And you can actually go pretty light with this. As I come toward the front of his head, I'm just gonna keep adding a lot of water. And then I use some brush strokes also, like I was mentioning with, um, with that masking fluid, I was trying to preserve the roundness and the detailing that is in the face of a koi fish. So you can just sort of do some swooping, some swooping brush strokes that sort of mimic those lines. So it'll be more suggested lines than fully drawn lines, but it'll do the job that way. And then let me see. All right, so for the bottom edge, this is where I go in and I'm creating a muted purple out of my um, Prussian blue, because this is sort of the shadow color that I created for my water. It's my deepest blue is has a lot of this color in it. So in order to help round it, actually in here, there's actually a lot of cerulean. So we can mix the two, a little bit of cerulean, a little bit of Prussian blue, or whatever blues you used in the water, your light and your dark blue, if you wanna just follow the same logic. And then I can just add a little bit, let me see, I'm gonna take some of my Algerian just to sort of darken and purple that, but that was way too much. So you have to get the balance right. So I'm gonna just go in, whoops. I'm being heavy handed a bit today on my colors. Go in and add a little bit of that more, a little bit more of that purple. And I'm just gonna do a test of that color to see if I like it. Ah, oh, it's not too bad. Be a little bit more of my blue. Yeah, a little bit more like that. It's slightly more blue. So I'm gonna take this color now and go along the edge of the body that's into the water. And again, I'm just following the shape of those scales. This is a nice complementary too to all of those orange colors that I've got going on on the head of the fish. And there's a dark patch that I have here. I don't know if you guys have the same thing, but because it's in shadow, I'm actually, instead of keeping white between the scales, I'm gonna be adding this sort of blue purple color. And you can always just adjust it. You can add like a little bit more blue into it if you start getting bored of that color. I get bored of them pretty quickly. I don't want the same color over the entire painting. It looks flat. So sometimes I just shift it. And I know that I'm going more into this sort of part here with more cerulean. So I just added a little bit more of that cerulean in there. And there's way more cerulean on this side actually. So I'm gonna allow that to go even more blue, cerulean blue onto this side in the shadows. And again, this patch is in shadow. So I'm gonna paint over my white with the blue. And then I'm gonna add quite a bit of water. So I like this color, but it's right now it's a little bit too intense for me. So I'm just gonna really water it down and get into these sort of last little scales here.
And then I just go through and deepen some of those shadows on the body. For the fins, um, you can use, essentially they're translucent. So they're like basically white and then the light goes through them and you can see the background color. So you can pick whatever color you have nearby. In my case, it's mostly a cerulean blue, but I think I'm just gonna use that purple mix that I've been using and just put way more of my cerulean in it. And then I'm just gonna use the body of my brush and just gently sort of lay some color in just on those parts that would be thinner of those fins. Turning your paper might help with this. I'm trying to keep it flat for you guys, but sometimes turning it makes a big difference. And same with the fins on the side here. I do want it to be more white than my surrounding water because they are like a white translucent. So you want to make sure you have enough water or that it's washed out enough. That it's not like competing in intensity. Let me clean my palette for you guys. So you can continue. I'm just going to stop here with this one because it's pretty much colored in. And I want to get also, what time is it? Yeah, perfect. I want to get also to the leaves uh, or the lily pads. All right, so for the lily pads, essentially what I did was I wanted some sort of like really warm leafy greens with a little bit of blue. I didn't want them to be too too much of a blue green because it was gonna sort of con not contrast enough with the water. Um, so I wanted to sort of avoid having the exact same tones and I wanted something that was really fresh. So you can obviously, there's all kinds of earth greens on the market. Like this is a really crappy one I use sometimes. I probably shouldn't be using this, but I have it, so I use it. It's like really cheap watercolor, but it's a sap green. Sap green is a color that I keep on my palette in both oil paint and acrylic and this. It's a really nice green. It's um, in this one, I'm not sure it's transparent, but in the other paints in oil and acrylic, it's a transparent color. So it glazes really well. You can hue shift. So I, I think if you want to get a color that's like a good base earth tone, get a sap green. Um, just make sure it's not this crappy brand because this is actually not a true sap green at all. It's usually much deeper and warmer than that, but it is a good color to have on the palette. Otherwise, if I need to mix earth tone greens, um, obviously we all know that a blue and a yellow make a green. Um, and I think most people would automatically go and pick their primary yellow to make a green. Um, my primary, this one is a little bit orange, so it's already going to give me something earthy. However, like if you were to take a lemon, you would get something that's a little bit too, um, almost like fluorescent. So if you do have a yellow like this as your primary, it's already going to give you muddy greens, which is why this is maybe not always the best primary yellow to have. Um, you need something that's maybe, I'll just show you the difference. This is the lemon yellow. So you can already see like, I think in the lighting, maybe it's really bright, but you can already see the color difference. This now with this on my palette, this looks like an orange. So if you're gonna be trying to aiming for vi really, really vibrant greens, don't have this particular cadmium medium as your primary, have something that's more, let's see, I'm trying to not get, other colors in this. 
So if I take now this one, my lemon yellow, and I mix it with my ultramarine, now I have something that's way more intense. So you have to watch the undertones in, especially when you're mixing greens, you have to watch the undertones in your yellows and in your blues. But this when you sort of know what to expect with them. Um, it's really liberating. So if I, I'm just gonna show you the same test. If I take my Prussian blue, which is already a greeny blue, and then I add my lemon yellow to it, it's almost like fluorescent. You can get something really intense with those two colors. Whereas if I add it to my already sort of orange cadmium yellow, I'm already getting something that's a little bit more earthy. And then the color that I really like to use to create nice warm greens is uh, yellow ochre. So this is the yellow ochre on the palette. It's already kind of like a golden, ready gold yellow. It's a really beautiful color. It's quite a bit more orange even than this. Um, and in fact, if ever you're like thinking about chroma or you wanna brighten something, don't forget about taking, instead of adding white, which is what people normally think of doing, except for what white will do is it will, um, desaturate your color. So if ever, let's say you're painting something gold and you're using a yellow ochre as your sort of local or base color, you can take a yellow to then brighten it. And then I'm gonna even take this one. So this is my cadmium yellow. And then I could, if I wanted to go even brighter than this, just in terms of gaining luminosity in your paintings, I'm not really using it in this particular one, but it's just a trick for the future. I can then take this lemon yellow, and then I have a really interesting gradient happening within yellows, um, just by mixing my color. So this would then be like the shadow color, and this would be the highlight color. And then you can really gain a lot of form by using different um, saturations of the same color. So it's the same thing that we basically were aiming for with the head here. I actually didn't add quite enough yellow in there. I'm just gonna add some now, but whatever. So yeah, we were going for the same thing here, but it was reds and then using a yellow to brighten instead of a white. And then in this case, you can just create gradients with the same color family, but just going for using their chroma basically to your advantage. All right, so back to greens. <laughs> um, we want something kind of earthy. So I wanted something like sort of yellow and warm. So let's go for, let's try our uh, ultramarine blue or whatever main blue you have and then something like a yellow ochre. And then if it's too muddy, so it's already kind of an interesting color, but I could then add like a little bit of this yellow to it. I'm making something really gross right now, okay. Let me see, what would I prefer? So that one's too, let's try instead, maybe the, I forget what colors I mix. And it's possible I took something out of the tube for that. So I wanna actually mix something that's interesting. I'm gonna try the cerulean blue with, that's better. So I'll take the cerulean and I'll just, and then I'll take a bit of the yellow lemon. So that gives me something a little bit better. I'm gonna take a larger brush for this and I'm gonna make sort of a bigger batch of paint. Take my cerulean blue and a little bit of this yellow ochre to sort of balance out the blue in there because it's a little bit orange. So it's a little bit like a complimentary. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of my lemon to brighten it. Oops, too far. 
I want to mix up enough that I can use it across the leaves. A little bit of warmth with the yellow ochre and then a little bit of bright with my lemon yellow. I'm just going to test that out. That's not too bad. So that gives me like a nice light yellow, warm yellow green, warm yellow green. So for this, it's basically like my undertone for the entire leaf. So I'm actually just going to really lightly with a lot of water. Brush this across. I'm going to obviously avoid my little petals. And I might actually add a little bit more of my yellow in there just to brighten it even more. They don't all have to be exactly the same. It's nature, so everything isn't always equal. I'm just gonna give a base color to these. And I'm being fairly like loose with it at the moment. I don't mind having a little bit of texture. I should really be going like with the direction of the vines in the, in the petals. And I do like to mix often um, just because I get that variation. So on the next one, this one, it might be a little bit more vibrant even still. So I just basically took the same mix, but then added a little bit more blue and yellow this time than red. So we've got sort of a slightly brighter undertone. And as we move forward, we can go even sort of brighter. So I'll let the reds come out. Oops. And then let this be even. I need a little bit of red. It's too, that's way too fluorescent. But we can go a little bit higher chroma the closer that we get. We're gonna go over this, so I'm really not being very precious about it. And if it's too much, which this is, I'm just gonna dab it, which gives me some nice texture. And it also just kind of removes some of that paint. Really not precious at the moment, just filling in those solid areas with a little bit more paint. I'm constantly, I have this sort of already ready gold mix, so I'm picking it. This is why I keep a dirty palette. I almost always have colors that I can use on there. But it's hard to, it's hard for me to tell you guys what colors I'm using if I'm just grabbing from my old mixes because it's usually a very complex thing. All right, so now that I've laid down that first sort of color, I'm just gonna dab it, just add some texture. We're gonna go and mix something that's a little bit more, um, just a little bit more dark and blue green. So here I can take my ultramarine blue and then go in with some of my, maybe my lemon yellow. Just to give me something really nice and leafy. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then from here, I'm gonna make sure I'm using a fair amount of water. And I'm actually going to take a smaller brush just because I kind of want some brush streaks in there. Fair amount of water. And I'm going to start um, sort of paying attention to these 
um, sort of seam lines here. So I'm going to start in the center and kind of brush out. And these spots where I drew with the pencil, I'm actually going to leave them with some of that yellowish color showing through. And I'm not going to be, I'm thinking of a leaf. So they're fairly organic. So I'm sort of like laying the color into the center and then dragging it out with the body of the brush and just sort of letting a bit of dry brush happen and like a little bit of randomness happen in my strokes. I'm not, I don't want something that's too, um, that's too precise, I guess. I'm kind of leaving this one spot blank. I might go in and add like there's water coming onto it later. And then I actually might add a little bit more of my yellow on here and let this sort of come in to some of these, let it bleed into some of these areas too. We basically need to try to um, end up with sort of the same, not saturation, but the same intensity of color or amount of paint is in the fish. So this is like our benchmark now for the painting. So this will probably take a few layers. Um, next class, we're gonna sort of finish off these leaves and then the flowers and then the final little details. So we still have we still have some time next week to get through all this. And then again, in some sections, I'm just going to take sort of that warm green yellow and just let it blend in. So now I'm sort of letting the wet on wet technique happen in sections and I'm sort of allowing dry brush technique to happen in sections and just sort of randomly covering these just to give some nice texture in there. And then I just do the same thing, obviously, on the other leaves. And don't be afraid to mix new paint, even if it's not exact. We're not painting something that's man-made, it's nature. So it's all, there's variation in all of it. Again, just reaching from my piles. Now that we have some piles made, we can reach within them and sort of change the change the local color. You don't need to run, you guys have the videos too, so you don't need to like finish it at the same speed I am. This is a bit ridiculous for the size of painting and for the, the amount of detail. 
I think these normally take me, I don't know, maybe like six hours if I'm gonna, six to eight hours if I'm gonna finish one properly. So I'm kind of trying to rush through it with you guys in about four hours and explain different things at the same time. So it's a little bit rushed. Don't be afraid to just like take your time with it. I find mixing like this to um, where I just kind of constantly mix. It sort of helps me in the long run with understanding how my colors react with each other. And it just becomes sort of an intuitive process. And it's basically just by knowing your palette pretty well and the constant practice of mixing those colors together to get different variations. This one, I went way too far with the color. So you wanna to try to keep the amount of paint even. So this one, I had a little bit too much. So I'm just wiping off and dabbing and then it, it actually did something really cool anyways, but now it's balanced. So you need to try to make sure that you have the same amount of paint on the surface or in your paper across the whole painting. Otherwise it looks a bit weird. That's not to say that there's not areas that are like obviously with more water and less with less pigment because they're sort of washes, but generally speaking, the whole thing has to match. You don't want it like really thick in one area and then really thin in another one. And then just for the underneath part, in case we run out of time and you guys want to, yeah, we're out of time almost, um, just so you guys can finish like at home. Um, for the underneath part, so I did like a brown where it's curled up into my um, Prussian blue because the Prussian blue is the color that I have a lot in the shadows of the water. So I basically like, I kind of kept my same mixes of these earthy warm greens. Um, and actually this is kind of a perfect one. So I've got like, a mix of that um, ultramarine blue, some of the yellow ochre, some of the lemon yellow, um, just kind of mixed up on my palette already. And I'm just going to do a wash. Um, this is just for the lighter vein colors that are in there. I'm just going to do a wash here of where the leaves are sort of flipping up. just to sort of highlight them. I didn't want them the exact same color as the tops of the lily pads. And then from there, I mixed, um, actually I let washes happen. So from the top down, I added a little bit more um, burnt umber and then a little bit of that Prussian blue, and that gives me sort of a grayed out brown color. And I'm gonna sort of leave spots where there's veins, like we did on the top of the petal. And I'm trying to have them curve, sort of how the leaf would curve. So if it's curving up this way, I'm trying to do like rounded, rounded shapes for those.
And then while that paint is still kind of wet, I went in with some of just that Prussian blue, a little bit more of it than before. And I'm just letting it, maybe some cerulean actually also, because there's some cerulean blue in there. And I'm just gonna like put it on the bottom and just sort of let it flow up into that paint that I just laid down the brown, brown paint, just to sort of make it look like a bounce light on the bottom of that lily pad. And then again, I'm gonna add some of that brown in here. And then to round it out with the bounce light, I'm just adding a little bit of that blue mix into the brown. So it's much more blue, but still into that brown color. Don't be afraid to drop pigment down. So if you've gone too thick on the bottom side and you want more brown to push down into it, don't be afraid to take some, while it's still wet, to take more of your color with a whole bunch of water and let it go from the top then. And it will push the pigments down. So you'll get some like blooming effect. And again, if you've gone too far, this is me just like rushing, but if you've gone too far, you can add some more blue and it'll push back up. It's a bit much. All right. <clears throat> How are you guys doing? So focused. How is everybody? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Can I see? Yeah. Whoa, Linda, that's incredible. <laughs> oh my God, that looks so good. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. You should be proud of that one. She's quick. <laughs> yes. Jeez, you're faster than me. I think she's keeping my butt at this one. <laughs> Rebecca, how's yours? Can I see? Uh, come along. Oh, that's looking great. That's Thank awesome. You. Wow. Yeah, you guys are doing such nice work. And your camera is green again. I don't know what it is. I just this see is the little black dot. You should, um, you should send that to me so I can see it. Whose is green? Anne's. Her screen goes green. I can see it. You can see the color? Yeah. Weird. Why is she green on my end? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I can see it. It looks good. Really? Oh, I don't right. see yeah. it. <laughs> it's pretty. Here, I'll take it. Can I take a screenshot? I don't know. It's weird. I'm going to show Anne what I see. Here, Anne, I'm sending you a screenshot on Facebook. I don't know why this is. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I totally just see like, um, it's like fluorescent green. <laughs> that's weird. You'll have to send it to me so I can see the proper colors. <laughs> yeah, you guys have fun? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, good. good. Thanks for being there. And then I'll see you next week. We'll finish off them. If you haven't finished the lily pads, maybe just like finish painting those in and then we'll do the flowers and then the, the uh, pen outline so if you guys need pens you should grab some any old pen will do because we're not going to go
back over with watercolor. So just like a black pen that's kind of got sort of thin tips will, will work, honestly. Um, and also, so a last thing that I used, I'm just gonna show you guys this. And this is like not necessarily, it's not necessary, it's a nice to have. I picked these up off Wish. Although I'm almost like afraid to use Wish now because someone hacked my credit card. So maybe it came from Wish, maybe not, I'm not saying, but um, really, really cheap, but they do the job and they're just metallic paint. So if you have some metallic paints, I did, um, I think I hid my other fish. We'll see if I can find it really quickly. I have another fish somewhere. I have too many fish. Um, I'll show you next class. But basically it just, I stippled some detail. Um, I stippled some detail into like those reds and whites. Like I used the white one to um, create some of those extra sort of sheen um, on the fish, on the scales. And then I also used, I think it was a mix of these two. So I've got like sort of an orangey, well, you guys can't see it. Where is it? Woo, there we go. <laughs> sort of like a bronze and then a gold one. Um, just to add some sort of shadow and some sheen on the, um, on the orange parts. And I just kind of, I don't know how archival it is, but I was scanning these anyways, so got away with it. So yeah, not necessary, but kind of fun to have. Oh, and I did it on the green. Oh, you can see some of it on the green too. You guys see that? Oh, wait. I forgot, other camera. Okay, can you oh, see? Wow. There's some little dots and things mm -hmm. and just little sheen that's from that green, that's from the green one. And I literally just stippled it in over top. So that's something else that we can do to just give that like extra little bit of texture. Okay. That's it. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank All you. right, Bye. see ya. Bye. <laughs> bon, salut. Tu I don't I don't hear you right now. <laughs>